What's up, David? What we debating today, Marcus? It's time to start the show. Yeah. It's time to start the show. Off the top rope, four-figure leg lock. Ric Flair with the chest chop. Hater is wonder why I never tap out. A young king like the Marcus. Undertaking with a coffin. Choke slam so often. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Men the boy keep flossing. Men the boy keep talking. I'm with David. I'm with Marcus. And I got something to say. And I got something to say. And I got something to say. What's up, wrestling fans? I'm Marcus Shield. And I'm David Joseph. And this is the No Holds Barred Podcast. Our mission statement is to provide reviews and our opinions on sports entertainment and professional wrestling as a whole. Now, on today's show, we're going to talk about the Cruiserweight division in 205 Live. But before we get into that, we just want to say thank you so much for your continuous support of our show and our and your appreciation for the show at that. We wouldn't be here without you guys. And from the bottom of our hearts, we truly care about each and every single one of you. Thank you. Thank you for all your support, for those who are supporting us. Continue to support us, spread the word. We, we work hard at what we do and we thank you for the support and you keep us going. But today, we are joined by a third guy. This guy is an avid wrestling fan and he is a knowledgeable man at the genre of professional wrestling slash sports entertainment, which is a lot of what we talk about here, but you guys just don't know it yet, but you can learn a thing or two by watching these segments. He happens to be my brother, always the smartest guy in the room, Sammy Joseph. How you doing? I'm good, man. You doing all right? I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm in gimmick mode. I'm ready right, here we go. Listen. I'm ready to talk some sports entertainment. You better, you better have a game with your agent <laughs> today, dog. Championship mindset. I'm, I'm right coming there. at you. <laughs> Awesome. So this episode, um, is going to talk about the cruiserweights, and the question is, what cruiserweights should be added to the cruiserweight division? Just to take it that much further, and uh, you know what? I guess I'll start this one off. Okay. So um, definitely uh, one name that comes to mind that's on the indies right now um, is one guy in Lucha Underground, and his name is Brian Cage. Brian Cage, I believe, uh, he would make an awesome addition. I know what you guys are thinking. Brian Cage is about two fifty plus. He's jacked. But the thing is, he's also a hybrid athlete. And I'm actually going to take you guys back to 2005 because back in the X Division, Samoa Joe was added into the X Division and kind of took that division on his back and made it what it is today, which is an honorable division at that. And I think that, honestly, Brian Cage can be able to mix it up there with um, Brian Kendrick, Neville, some of the names in there. And uh, he would also show that you don't necessarily have to be 5'8 or uh, 200 pounds in order to flourish in a division for smaller guys. So I think uh, he would be an awesome addition. And another person uh, I would add is uh, Prince Puma in Lucha Underground, uh, also known as Ricochet all around the world, especially in Mexico. Uh, Lucha, he's a, a luchador. Um, he's also different, but also he does. he's not only a high flyer, but he's also a strong style expert. He's a technician. He can do it all. The man's a jack of all trades. And I think uh, he would definitely uh, add a mysterious element to the Cruiserweight division. Same with you think. Interesting picks. Off the wall yeah, picks. Would, I like that. I like them too. I like them too. But... Everybody kind of forgets about this one guy when he came in long ago on SmackDown. Brian Kendrick had a partner, you know. Uh huh. So I think if they can contact him in some way, let him go in, be his own self, prove that he can, you know, do it without Brian Kendrick, that would be so fabulous. That so you want Paul London to come Paul back? Paul London. To the, you know that's not, everybody forgot okay. about. That's not wow. a bad idea for for the simple fact that people do forget he did have a brief cruiserweight run by himself. He actually, yeah, he wasn't that bad. True. He can do a lot of things that a lot of people can't do in there. So yeah, I think he can contribute to that. You know, the crowd pleasing, high flying offense. That would be a great ad. They should try to contact him in some way and see see what he can do for them. Cause I think he can do a lot. I agree, and honestly, Paul London, he's actually a uh, famous around just the U.S. I think he's still wrestling right now, actually. He also uh, used to work for Ring of Honor at that, so I think um, he's only just a call away, so it's definitely possible. I, I'd say let's do it. I'm going to go a little bit of a different route, and you guys might look at me funny because this guy wasn't exactly the cream of the crop. He wasn't exactly the best looking. He wasn't exactly the biggest. But oh every time he was a part of something, oh he put his heart, he put his all, and he always was compelling. This guy, 
I don't know if he's willing to wrestle, but I do know he got his wrestling school, the lockup, which top world promotions wrestlers often train at, Spike Dudley. Wow. Spike! Be a great addition Whoa. to the Cruiserweight division. Hear me out. Ah, whether, it is a, whether it's the underdog baby face that is getting pummeled and taking the craziest bumps, whether it's the heel that he played when he was the Cruiserweight champion, feuding with Rey Mysterio on SmackDown years ago. Uh-huh. He excels. He's a good worker. He's a veteran. And I think the Cruiserweight division right now, they got the young talent. They got the future in place. What they really need is some Cruiserweight stars. And I really believe Spike Dudley is a star within the lane of the Cruiserweight division. Let me ask you a question. I mean, Come don't you on, think, man. do you think, like, I think Spike would have, like, such a, a short fuse because really? he'll have a little bit of buzz and then after a while he'll die out. Yeah, he yeah, he yeah, yeah, no, no I'm, trust me, I'm an ECW aficionado, but Spike Dudley, if you remember his run, he had the Dudleys help him out, so you're going to have him, like, as a cowardly heel, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can. Yeah. Nah, you man. Can? He would give us I don't know, but that was back when he was in his prime. He was in his, like, late 20s. Now he's in his 40s. You know, could he still? So it's to Gary, and let he's me, coming back. But let me, we'll see, man. Kendrick's on the Kendrick's on the back now. I think they, like I said, I think they have the young guys. They got the Cedric Alexander. They got Rick Swan. They got TK Prater. They got the Young Five Nation. They need the veterans to bring them along and put these guys over so they can seem important. Otherwise, these wins don't mean that much. But we already have James Ellsworth. We don't need Spike. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, we don't need Spike. Fight fighting chance. It's it's leave it to you. Don't, don't put them in the same lane. I mean, James is more of a character. Spike is a wrestler, but it's like I, I think it'll just be a short momentum for Spike if he was to be put on, um, brought back to the cruiserweight division. He'll be forgotten about more or less. All right, I think all, right, so. all right, let's switch it up a little bit. Let's talk about the state of the cruiserweight division as a whole up to this point so far. What do you guys think? I'm gonna start with you, Sammy. Uh, Give I, it a grade. At, at first, at first, I didn't like it. I like, I like, I like the championship. The whole purple thing, it's they have their own little show. Everybody has their own characters. I like it. I really like it. Honestly, how I feel about the cruise weights, I think it's in this point of reconstruction at the moment. If I was to give it a, a letter grade, I'd say it's solid C right um, now, but it could potentially be a B if they truly continue doing what they're doing with Jack Gallagher and Brian Kendrick and also this newly formed Neville. Um, my issue with the Cruiserweight division, right, is that you got guys like Rick Swan, guys like TJ Perkins, guys like Tony Nese. There's a lot to be desired in the Cruiserweight division, but it's in a point of uh, progression, in my opinion. I think I, I'm going to... I'm going to go in kind of in the middle. I'm going to give it a, a solid C plus for the simple fact that, you know, when I think Cruiserweight Division, going back even to the Monday Night Wars, the Cruiserweight Division is essentially to have a show within the show, to get the crowd, to get that easy pop, and to show these maneuvers to, you know, kind of ooh and ah the crowd. They've been doing that from day one. But what they haven't been doing from day one is go yeah. 5 Live. Because yeah. you're busy, you got a, one segment, you're trying to get over Drew Gulak, you got another segment, you, you have to make Cedric Alexander look strong, and then you got another segment, you got to make Neville, who reinvented himself, and he, he's awesome. And, and you know, it's kind of a lot of scattered around. But I'll give them a C plus because they're starting to establish those identities, and the work rate has been pretty good. Oh, absolutely. I'm not denying the ability at all, but I think um, one um, mistake that they made was that they tried to, well, they assumed that everybody watched the Cruiserweight Classics. Not everybody did. And so the Cruiserweight Division could be better than the Cruiserweight Division in 05. That, that, yeah. Be that, positive about You it. know, I'm, they're, they're on a good playing field, and I'm optimistic. Yeah, absolutely. Could I, could I ask you guys a question? Go right ahead, man. Who do you think is the top Cruiserweight talent right now? Like the... Like, like, like the long like, term, like, like the, the most like the guy, like, like to be the face the, of the cruise way. Yeah, who's the guy for the cruise way? If I was to think, I'm gonna go with Cedric Alexander. Yeah, yeah, so he has a bright future. I would see him. In that division, he seems like someone who's a money guy. He seems like someone who's never used a backpack. But it's like the whole cartoon gimmick. It works too, because he's looked. The character selection. But I don't think he has like a lot of versatility in the character. It's just like, yeah, he has a video game thing, but how is he gonna take that to the next level? You know what I mean? Like, how is he going to evolve from that point on? It's just, I, I don't really see it. He doesn't strike me as a tough guy. Um, yeah. And I'm just, I'm just personally not a fan of TJ Perkins. I don't know, that's just me. All right. Uh, 
Well, this wraps up this first segment. Stay tuned for the rest of our segments. Joined by Sammy, always the smartest wrestling fan in the room. Yeah. We're going to talk the MVP of 2016, our bold predictions for 2017, facing heel commentators, plus more. Stay tuned for more No Holds Barred.